Hello and welcome. Tuesday noon on my time. <laughs> Tuesday evening for Mariana's time. <laughs> and let's have a conversation with the earth. Um, in contemplating today's we uh, decided to look at the fact is um, the earth from your perspective a rock in space floating around or is the earth a conscious being? I know in the 80s there was a movement that started in Britain looking more at the earth being a conscious being. And I also am aware that that totally disappeared into nothingness. And so uh, I am actually wondering, what is the earth for you? Marianne, what do you say? <laughs> well, what can I say, Karina? For sure, for a long, long, long period, the earth was an object, mm -hmm. an object in the universe. And it's more lately, the last few months, perhaps COVID <laughs> contributed a lot <laughs> to become more conscious of this. <laughs> It's like, yeah, Earth is so much more than an object. It isn't an object at all. Mm -hmm. It is vivid as I am vivid, as you are vivid, as we all are. It's, yeah, we can't name it as it's something out of blood <laughs> and tears, yeah. but it exists of the same materials we are existing out or that is true yeah and it is it is for a short time really that i became aware that i allowed myself because it, yeah. it had to see also to allowing and I named COVID by becoming more conscious or getting another aspect of the earth, coming out of that vision of only the earth is only a rock or an object in mm -hmm. the universe is what the earth started to show us, nature started to show us when mm -hmm. the deadly virus came in that contrast really called and waked up something inside of me to go and have another look yeah. to go and being present in another way yeah. and a whole world opened so yeah i'm curious curious what's for you what is it for you i would say for me it's similar as it uh, was for you for so many years uh, the earth was an object and that has changed probably two three years ago for me that uh, I looked at the earth having consciousness and it became really really obvious during when COVID started and how quickly things changed for the earth with uh, uh, air pollution, for instance, and uh, people not traveling as much, uh, flying less. Uh, and as a sudden, within a short period of time, the air pollution cleared up. And then it was actually also the water pollution, like seeing in people that I am in same groups uh, and that posted pictures from Venice with uh, canales as a sudden being clear that you could actually see the bottom. 
And uh, yeah, some pictures may have been uh, misidentified, but uh, what was a consistent one was the water had become clear. And how does that happen sort of overnight? Mm. Uh, the earth has to have some play in that. And um, it's also, I started to ask questions is, okay, Earth, in California with all the wildfires going on, what is going on for you there? Because there are, were some images that had been posted on Facebook that for me were not natural lightning. And so, you know, how much are we trying to manipulate weather? And I know that this is going on. Uh, I'm not foolish enough that I think people are not trying in one way or another to play God, which is, you know, you, you wish scientists would have learned when they had the first atomic bomb explosion that maybe we keep our hands off of certain things, but the the curiosity and the power that is mm -hmm. implicit in being able to do things are just too tempting. And that is even yeah. going on today, you know, that uh, there are experiments done and planned that play into that same power game that the atomic bomb did. And so, how is the earth going to respond to that? And you know, you named these manipulations. Mm -hmm. And I can remember me years ago already, it was mentioned by someone. And at that time, I heard it and I didn't hear it. Like, mm -hmm. I heard it and it called my, took my attention. But within less than a second, it was pulled back like, that's not possible. Okay. That can't be true. Yeah. Like, and how many times do we that, that we are conscious of something, that we are aware of something, but because it, it, it looks so insane, so unnatural, that we think that it doesn't exist and we go into our stupidity at that time <laughs> instead of going really with, with, yeah, what if we would choose even for those things who look so far away of us because it's not of our interest, but yeah. what if we would go with that awareness and because in a way it is also judging that I did at that time, judging that something like that wasn't possible, judged from my point of view and my mm -hmm. world where it doesn't exist. So when it's not existing in my world, it doesn't <laughs> exist. And how, uh -huh. who is that overall? Yeah, that's in our individual worlds, but for everybody else. Yes, you yes, know? yes, and we see it really clear in in the latest months. Mm -hmm. Is how many stupidity is even increasing from that space yeah. of. That's not possible because I can't see and I won't allow myself to see any further than, than my <laughs> nose. So when yeah. it isn't here in front of me, even though it is in front of them, as I can remember, I think you saw also the film with David uh, Attenbury. Uh, no, Attenbury doesn't call the... 
alive on on earth and he shows there he's gonna he went to visit the place the hiroshima where there was that explosion and everything was, and everyone was evacuated but now so many years later nature also showed there nothing mm -hmm. can kill me I have my own consciousness, nothing. And I have my own it's, ways. Yeah, I remember yeah. Chernobyl pretty well because I was being in uh, in Germany and that whole uh, radioactive cloud had moved west and, mm -hmm. oh, God, how is it going to damage my son, etc. But uh, what you really, when you were talking, uh, what that brought up in me is how much is it because I cannot imagine, according to my points of view, that something is possible? Yeah. How much am I really going at things from a totally different angle? Like uh, here in Colorado, we have fires and there's friends that have become eventually affected by those fires. And what if Earth is a conscious being? What if I talk to the Earth? Would it be possible for you to not affect their property? And yes, I, uh, I'll admit I uh, don't have a point of view and it's probably easier because they are not like my kids or something. It's easier to stay neutral in a sense, but with that no point of view to just ask the earth, is it possible? Can you make that happen? And if it works for the earth, I know the earth can make it happen. Yeah, it is. And I hear you also, it's, it's more ease to stay neutral when it doesn't involve your own family. Yeah. And at the same time, Karina, as I can speak for me, there is really the willingness we also happy. for We're having we a lot today. Yeah. <laughs> but we are on. <laughs> well, as long as we stay on and don't get totally kicked off, we'll, we'll work with it. For that. And where I was going to was, for sure, I, I know for myself that I have Really, I, I became clear of that. I have the willingness to allow all also when it would happen with one of my children. And they are affected by having the willingness to be in allowance also of their choice. What did they create? When I ask and talk to earth it's not up to me it's not because i request the earth that the earth really has to give me what i'm requesting and from that point of view as no point of view as i'm requesting when it would happen with one of mines I know now that I will have the willingness to be in allowance mm -hmm. also from for what will happen or in which way they will be affected. And perhaps that can sound cool, cold. I I really don't matter about how other people think about this way of saying it in, or perhaps it's more like what is your experience about
acting from awareness that other people aren't willing yeah. to go to and then judged uh, over that without knowing what they are judging from the start. It's, uh, it's a totally different way of being. And it's that understanding that in this reality, we have certain definitions, actions of what caring is all about, which not necessarily are true. And if I look at the earth as a conscious being, then let me backtrack for a moment. You are a conscious being, I'm a conscious being. Just because I'm asking you to give me something doesn't mean that you have to give it to me. You have choice if you desire to or not. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, when I'm asking the earth to, you know, spare a house, maybe, it's the earth who has choice to do so or not, depending on what is working for the earth. And That's by and large, I know the earth has our back. The earth yeah. is supporting us. So. Uh, and that, Karina, is what you are saying. What's working for the earth, but what's working for the earth comes also from the consciousness and the awareness the earth has. That and how aware and conscious am I willing to be? to even just yes. recognize that the earth has consciousness. Yeah. And if I'm here and if I'm willing to contribute to the earth, am I basically saying or having the point of view, you know, earth, I'm contributing to you. You better da 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 da, you know, and but that has nothing to do with true contribution. That is basically. <laughs> I'm laughing because there is something coming up really visual, nearly like we call the earth our mother. Uh -huh. And what came up was what if we would ask if really the earth wasn't your mother, but you are the mother of your child, the earth is your, your child. Would that change the way people would act on? And that brought immediately, would it? Because how many parents do parenting from the same superiority, from the other type of yeah, caring that it isn't so <laughs> that's why I was laughing it was yeah it could be interesting to see what could happen but truth would it really change something it could and it could. I fully I fully hear you you know it's just because we really we really I don't want to say that but not many of us have a real understanding of what gifting and receiving is. And are we even willing to receive the gift that the earth has for us? And to stay with the hypothet with the fire, if the property doesn't burn down, are we willing to see it as a gift that the earth is giving us or are we checking it off as being lucky? Or in case of the request being really powerful, but yep. only by yourself. Yep. And not, not getting that fact of true collaboration. Yeah. 
And what would be possible if most of the people would start to get that fact? Yeah. Yeah, and, and for me, it became clear also that watching many documentaries, nature, about nature, about animals, up till a few months ago, I was watching and being touched by, and still as that kind of separation, as that kind mm -hmm. of, yeah, those are things happen and it's life, but not from the oneness, not from the cooperation, not from being. What, listening to that, what just popped for me is, uh, I would like to invite people to watch on Netflix, the movie, My Octopus Teacher and be prepared to really get things from a totally different perspective because uh, the filmmaker is really stepping into who he is and allowing the octopus to be a conscious being that makes its own choices. And there is one scene that is just melting my heart. And I'm not going to name it because I don't want to spoil the, the experience no. of the movie. But it is such a totally different way of being with uh, another animal, of being in the world, being part of the world, that really speaks extremely loudly to the fact of having that relationship with the earth, that contributory relationship. And to know that certain things just have their place, even if as humans we judge them, what if we step out of the judgment and allow nature, the earth, to have its own rhythm and way of being? Yeah. And for me, Karina, for me, it's clear that being and being in oneness, cooperating, is no place for judgment. There mm -hmm. is no place. The moment, how big, how, how little, how positive or how negative, which doesn't exist finally, but when there is some kind of judgment, there is separation. <laughs> there is separation. It's not possible. So, and and that also the the film you mentioned the octopus my teacher that was also some really palpable mm -hmm. in during that film and the transformation yeah the creator goes through is yeah magic it's yeah. magical and isn't it curious also that lately those kind types of documentaries are now really coming to the to the front as is yeah it is time it is time to let go of judgment because there will no no normal as we know the normal yeah. from before. All those who are still fighting for that normal, where are they? Where are they? And even if they are there, that normal was only declared normal, but wasn't actually normal. 
And isn't it that that normal cost what's happening now? Yep. <laughs> so yep. we could say that. Yeah, I mentioned it in, in a conversation I had uh, a few days ago and, and I said it really, but do you really want to go back? Yeah, yeah, normal like that and that and that. And, hmm, that's really interesting because from my point of view is all that normal created what happens now. And I'm not referring the virus virus the virus but all what's around it yeah and how they go with it and the way they use it also to go even more in superiority and that was that was vivid in the background and during that normal we lived we didn't go and have a look in the background, even though we knew it was there. But people were deaf and blind. And now they want to go back to that normal? It's very interesting. And are we out again? I'm not sure. Hi, Karina. Are you alive? <laughs> and we are out again. Or not. I'm not sure. I can see we are live, still live. But it's Karina Karina that in, is in charge of it, so I'm not sure. We are still going. So, is there something more that I want to see about that normal when waiting for Green to come back? Yeah, let me go on. It's like that normal. Become, became clear for me that I also was taking the normal for normal and when it didn't affect me directly as in restricting the way I created my life then it was all normal, but that normal isn't any longer. And now I can see also clear that that normal wasn't also me. I still was living from, even though I lived already different and in a different way and different point of views, creating in a different way, but still from a small box, the box of this reality where <laughs> I still went with the judgments, the definitions, and still am because, yeah, there is... <sighs> A lot changed in the last months, the last two, three years, but more profound in the last months and even weeks. But really conscious about that, I'm truly 
still living from judgments. And Karina says she dropped off. So, yeah, let us wrap it up here and we will meet again next week. And uh, how does it get any better than this? So, for now, Bye bye and sorry, next time will be better, different. Bye bye.